Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Volkswagen TDI. And this particular trim is the SEL, which is the highest trim level for the Jetta TDI. TDI, of course, meaning this is a diesel engine, it's turbocharged with direct injection. This is a four-door sedan with seating for five. Fog lights, daytime running lights, and the headlights rotate with the turn you take. This has a coefficient of drag of 0.30. Now it does appear that there are flaps in the front that can close for increased aerodynamics and then if cooling is more of a requirement then the flaps can open up to allow for more airflow through the radiator. The Jetta TDI starts at 21,640 and as tested here we're looking at 28,920. The trunk can be opened with the key fob. Large deep trunk with 60-40 split rear folding seats and underneath the cover you've got tools and a spare. So let's take a look under the hood. Packaging is fairly tight as you can see and you do have this large engine cover but it can be easily removed. Checking for serviceability we've got our engine coolant over here, windshield washer fluid, you've got your oil fill and your dipstick. And then you do have your battery right here, so simple access for that. And it is towards the back, which is nice. Uh, keep the weight towards the rear, towards the center of the vehicle. Now the brake fluid reservoir, as you can see, is a little bit buried in there. This is an inline four-cylinder diesel engine, two liters, turbocharged with direct injection. It features a iron block and aluminum heads. The engine produces 150 horsepower at 3,500 RPM and 236 foot-pounds of torque at 1,750 RPM. Dual overhead cams with four valves per cylinder and you do have variable valve timing on both the intake and exhaust. So let's follow the path of the intake air. We've got our air filter up here which will be pulling in air up from the front. That will pass back to the inlet of the turbocharger. There you can see the turbocharger so the air is going to be coming in up here, pass to the inlet of the turbo then come back up front where it'll be fed to this air to water intercooler. Here you can see the coolant lines running into the intercooler and then from there into the intake manifold and into the engine and then out the exhaust where it will then pass into this exhaust portion of the turbo. The exhaust is fed through a single pipe to the rear where it then enters the muffler and exits through two tailpipes. Power is sent to the two front wheels through 17 inch wheels. These are wrapped in 225 over 45 Continental tires. Up front, 11.3 inch ventilated disc brakes match with a McPherson strut style suspension. So here you can see the drive axle coming in and then you can see the anti-roll bar with the linkage right here which connects up to the strut. So here you can see the steering linkage and then to the left of this we've got the anti-roll bar on top of the lower control arm. In the rear, 10.7 inch solid disc brakes matched with a multi-link suspension. As you can see, separate coil spring and shock and this allows for more space in the trunk. So you can see the trailing arm here on the left. We've got another link up top here. Here you can see the shock and the separate coil spring. And then behind the coil spring to the left, you can see the anti-roll bar. So let's check out the interior to unlock the car keyless entry and it's as simple as opening the door. Locking it you can press right on the outside of the handle. Now I was a bit concerned at first because it looks like there isn't anywhere to put in the mechanical key. Let's say this key fob stops working but uh, that's actually not true. You can actually pop off this cover right here and then gain access and use the mechanical key to lock it or unlock it. Leather seats all the way around and electronically adjustable up front. Okay, so sitting in the driver's seat, plenty of leg room. Uh, as you can see with your left leg, not really any contact that's going to occur. If you do end up resting your right leg, then it is a hard plastic. But like I said, plenty of leg room. You also have a decent amount of headroom. This might be an issue for someone who's pretty tall, but I'm about 6'1 and I have no problem with it. Now the steering wheel is actually pretty nice, real soft leather, and you've got a lot of control on it. What I like about this uh, steering wheel versus that Audi S4 that I just tested, you've got way more control on it. So you've got cruise control directly on the steering wheel rather than some awkward little handle back here. Uh, and you also have uh, the ability to skip songs, which you couldn't do on the Audi, so that's nice that you've got that skip song. Uh, so I like the functionality of the steering wheel, and it has a good feel to it. Now you've got four power automatic windows. You can adjust the mirrors electronically and they also have the capability to defrost. 
Now your display up front, you've got the tack on the left and the speedometer on the right, and then a nice variety of things you can scroll through in the center. So you can look at your average fuel consumption, how many miles you've got left, how far you've gone, your average speed, what speed you're going, and oil temperature. It's nice to see oil temperature, not many cars incorporate that, and it's a nice thing to know when your engine is warm. Looking at the entertainment system here, you've got navigation, you can connect up to your phone, dual climate control, and you've got three uh, different settings for heated front seats, manual six-speed transmission, as you can see, uh, push start, you've got cup holders in the center, and a standard mechanical parking brake. The center console is a bit small, and it has a connection for an old iPod, if you still have an old iPod, I guess. And then you've got your glove compartment, decent size. A nice power sunroof up top, and you've got a place to hold some sunglasses. Visibility out the front also pretty good, to the sides also very good, and out the rear isn't too bad. Now, the thing that I like about this versus that Beetle that I tested, the rear view mirror actually covers the whole rear window, which is nice, and checking your blind spot is fine, and you also have blind spot detection on your side mirrors. Now, sitting in the rear, I've got the front driver's seat adjusted to where I will be driving, and as you can see, legroom actually isn't too bad, so uh, decent space. You can fit some adults back here. Headroom is a bit limited. Now, you have this storage compartment here as well as here and a 12-volt outlet, uh, power windows for the rear passengers to use. You also have this fold-down, so you do have cup holders and this removable panel to gain access to the trunk uh, if you want to put some skis through or something like that. Okay, so let's take it for a test drive. Push button start, as I mentioned earlier. Stick it in first. And we're off. Now, first thing, just gonna talk about the manual transmission itself. I actually do really like it. Um, the manual shifting is a bit notchy, but engagement uh, is fairly effortless. It's pretty easy to do. And the clutch pedal feel is decent. Now, my one problem with the clutch pedal is that you can feel some vibration, some oscillating vibration in it. And it's kind of like you can feel the engine. It's kind of this whoop, 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 and it's along the entire range of that uh, clutch pedal. So you do feel that, which is a bit strange, but it is easy to shift gears, um, easy to downshift and match it up, so no problems there. Overall, the ride quality is obviously going for comfort, uh, and it is comfortable. The seats are comfortable, the suspension's pretty soft, uh, you do get a decent amount of body roll and cornering, and when you really put your foot down, you know, the body will roll back, or if you slam your foot on the brake, it'll kind of tilt forward. But uh, it's a comfortable ride, and it's a quiet interior, not a lot of noise from the outside. And you know, driving in these turns with this manual transmission, it actually is a fun car to drive. You know, it's got a decent amount of torque down low, you know, 236 foot pounds, which is pretty good, and you can definitely feel it. Now, the torque does taper off once you get into the higher RPMs. After about 4,000, you noticeably start to lose it, uh, but it's a fun car to drive for sure, especially with this manual transmission. And considering how good of gas mileage it gets, the fact that it's actually fun to drive is pretty impressive. As far as the brake pedal feel and the throttle pedal feel, uh, both are very easy to adapt to and learn to. Neither of them seem overly sensitive, uh, and both just seem, you know, fairly straightforward and it's something easy to learn. So we'll do a quick little highway pull here. So at 2000 RPM, and I'm gonna put my foot down. And we're at 70. So not bad acceleration overall. So driving on the highway, we're doing about 65. Uh, not a lot of road noise, not a lot of wind noise. So it's actually pretty quiet in here. I did look at a decibel reading and it was about fluttering at around, you know, 77, 78 decibels. So not too bad. Actually a bit quieter than my STI, which you would probably imagine. Okay, so I've completed my fuel economy test course, and as you can see, an incredible 55.5 miles per gallon. This is a 53-mile course, primarily highway with some city and hills mixed in. Now, this car is rated at a pretty impressive 31 in the city and 46 on the highway. And as you can see, I did a little bit better than that on the highway my course primarily being highway. So 55.5, absolutely incredible fuel economy. As you can see, the little fuel gauge here has barely even moved. And this is including another 20 some miles that I've put on it just driving around. So about 70 to 80 miles on it. And the fuel economy gauge has barely even moved. Absolutely incredible. 
and the range as you can see it's saying I've got 685 miles left so phenomenal now I'm going to compare this car to three cars I've driven previously not that it actually competes against these three cars but it's useful in kind of understanding some things about this car uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is the Beetle R-Line that I drove uh, and the things that I like about this better than that R-Line is the gearing in this is actually pretty normal first gear doesn't rev to 40 second gear doesn't rev all the way to 70 miles an hour and you lose all that torque doing that and it also makes it a little bit more difficult to drive in the city uh, if you're in stop and go traffic where you can't just kind of inch like you can with this so I like the gearing in this better than the Beetle R-Line also the rear view mirror in this you can see the whole rear window which you couldn't in the Beetle so I like that now comparing the steering I'm going to talk about the Audi S4 that I drove uh, because the steering feel in this is actually better than the S4 and especially better on the highway you don't have these weird torquing in it uh, so I like the steering in this vehicle and it's you know surprising because this is a budget Volkswagen versus that S4 is you know a luxury Volkswagen so nice to see uh, good steering in this vehicle so the final car I'd like to compare it to is that Ford Fusion plug-in hybrid that I was driving and on my test drive uh, of that I managed to get I think it was around 44 miles per gallon on the fuel economy test run now with this I got 55 miles per gallon and you know it's a diesel so it is different and it isn't a plug-in so you don't have those 20 miles of electric range but let's just talk about that for a second because this car is over ten thousand dollars cheaper than that Ford Fusion plug-in hybrid and it got over 10 miles per gallon better in the fuel economy test course and considering this car starts at 21,600 some you know it's a pretty reasonable decision to make to say hey you know I could get this car get extremely good fuel economy have something that's actually fun to drive with a manual transmission uh, and it's not all that expensive so you know there's a lot of reasons why this car makes a lot of sense I think for someone who wants hybrid fuel economy but they want a car that's still fun to drive this car makes a lot of sense so let's talk about the vehicle overall the things I like the things I don't like starting with the things that I don't like and honestly there aren't that many I think this is a great car uh, the two things that I would mention the clutch pedal feel is a bit strange because you have that vibration in it from the engine uh, and it's just not all that refined compared to a lot of the other manual transmissions I've driven. And the other thing, I think this nav screen is just a bit small. For using it as a media player and things like that, no problem. But when you are using it as a nav screen, it is a bit small. Um, and you know, it's really only about the size of a smartphone. Now, moving on to what I like about this vehicle. And, you know, it really comes down to the powertrain. I really like this engine. It's got a good amount of torque and it gets incredible fuel economy. Why more people aren't driving diesels in America, it doesn't really make sense to me. This is a great car. It's fun to drive. It comes with a six-speed manual transmission. It has usable torque and it got 55 miles per gallon on my fuel economy test course. I mean, it's just unbelievable. So great from the powertrain standpoint. Love the engine, love the torque, love the fuel economy. Also, it has a pretty decent sound system, and I think the interior overall is just very functional. You know, everything's pretty intuitive to use. Uh, you don't have that armrest covering the emergency brake and the cup holder like in that Beetle R that I was testing. You know, it's a very functional interior, so I like that. And just one more comment on fuel economy before I close out. You know, I was driving this uh, just on the highway for about 40 miles, and during those 40 miles, I was actually averaging 61 miles per gallon, which is incredible. So, you know, hats off to Volkswagen for the incredible fuel economy that this car is capable of. Fantastic. Really have enjoyed driving it. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. Thanks for watching.